It has been reported that Elon Musk in Texas has taken the first steps to stand against Russian tanks. He has deployed EMP tanks. It is a high-tech tank that is capable of turning the tide of war in a matter of minutes. Well, consider these tanks as the god of tanks. But the question is, what exactly is an EMP and how bad is it? Well, stay tuned to the end of the video and get to know more about it. Hello everyone and welcome to Elon Musk Evolution. If you're a Musk fan and don't want to miss anything about this incredible person, then smack the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you will be notified whenever a new video is uploaded. In today's video, we are going to tell you what Elon Musk just revealed about the EMP tanks to stop the Russian tanks. So with that being said, let's start with what an EMP is. EMPs are intense bursts of electromagnetic energy that cause damage or can be used to do so. Though natural EMPs are sometimes detected on the radio during lightning storms, solar geomagnetic storms make much more powerful EMPs. EMPs can also be created artificially through nuclear explosions or by radio frequency weapons. Due to such intense EMPs, electric and magnetic fields can cause voltage spikes and currents in electrical electronic systems, damaging sensitive components such as semiconductors. During the first few nuclear tests, the existence of a powerful EMP was proved. In 1962, the U.S. conducted a high-altitude nuclear test called Starfish Prime. A 1.4 megaton bomb exploded 400 kilometers above Johnston Island in the Pacific Ocean. Electric equipment in Hawaii, more than 1,400 kilometers away, was affected by the EMP generated by the experiment. Streetlights, alarms, circuit breakers, and communications equipment all looked distorted and damaged. Other tests by the U.S. and the former USSR showed similar results, with even underground cables damaged. After the Starfish Prime test, seven Low Earth Orbit, or LEO, satellites failed due to radiation damage to their solar arrays and electronics. At that point, we realized EMP had devastating effects. However, as we all know that Musk has teams of the world's finest engineers and scientists, so this led to further development of nuclear bombs optimized for EMP effects instead of physical destruction. Musk knows that nuclear EMP weapons can cause problems during hostilities between states. EMPs can cause catastrophic damage to electronics in vast areas spanning thousands of kilometers and may often affect the country using the weapon. In addition, the first use of nuclear weapons increases the risk of retaliatory nuclear strikes. EMP weapons against civil and military targets. They're called day one weapons by some experts since they're likely to be used as early as possible in war to maximize asymmetry. Nowadays, modern militaries rely heavily on electronics. Even at the lowest levels, weapons, equipment, communications, and data sets have some embedded electronics. Aside from ships, aircraft, artillery pieces, armored vehicles, radar, military communication and data networks, command and control centers, automated air defense systems, AD, etc., electronic components are also critical at higher levels. Most of today's military equipment and networks are insufficiently or not at all hardened against EMPs. Because of this, militaries are vulnerable to EMP attacks at every level. And that's what Musk wants to change. Musk knows that EMP tanks could be very useful, yet devastating due to E-bomb. An EMP tank deployed with E-bombs with lethal radius, even of a few kilometers, could take out a battalion-sized force or a lot of airfield or naval assets. He had seen that the damage to the electronic systems will require a long period of time to fix, so there may be months of downtime for the combat systems affected. And having unserviceable combat systems and no command and information systems will likely cause confusion and uncertainty, which will give the offensive side an advantage to gain early gains and turn the situation in our favor. However, on the other side, defending forces can disrupt enemy control and coordination with EMP tanks. Since EMP tanks are not very effective in a wide range of areas, it would take a lot of EMP tanks to cover the full battle zone, including things like war rooms, operation centers, force HQs, airfields, AD systems, etc. 
Musk stated that EMP tanks could be more effective than normal tanks since they wouldn't spare even the dugouts or blast protected targets. A single wave of EMP could seriously weaken a force. Even localized damage can cause problems, especially when combined with other forms of attack. So to make sure EMP weapons are used optimally and deny the enemy a chance to counter EMP, Musk would need to devise tactics and strategies. Other than military targets, E-bombs could also be used to attack urban data centers, factories, and other centers of gravity. The targets that are hardened against physical destruction or in the middle of the civilian population might be most vulnerable to EMP tanks. However, with Musk's increased networking and redundancy, data and communication facilities are becoming resilient. He stated that EMP tanks' weapons could also be used clandestinely in peacetime to take out targets since it's hard to prove who's responsible for what. These kinds of EMP applications could also deter enemies from taking military action. He stated in a conference that EMP information is kept highly secret, so experts can't fully assess the level of damage that may result. The degree of damage would be influenced by target characteristics as well, such as whether the electronics on the target are enclosed in metal, the percentage of electronic components, the exposure of metal cables, the connection to the power supply, and terrain masking. According to him, it is possible to determine likely damage by conducting simulations and field tests. The potential collateral damage caused by the E-weapons, i.e. damage to electronic equipment in hospitals and emergency services, makes their use sinister and requires careful consideration. That's why Elon Musk is studying EMP. Countries like North Korea and Iran are capable of setting off an EMP tanks with nuclear weapons. As you know, how big it is determined by how much it will affect. So the intensity of electrical and magnetic fields decreases with distance, so most things won't be destroyed. However, in the blast zone, the electric grid and every car, TV, radio, phone and appliance would be ruined. But is there anything that can be done to reduce the impact of such a catastrophe? As Musk stated, the techniques that reduce EMI grounding, shielding and filtering are the ones that work best. Filtering is useless, but shielding and grounding are great so a well-grounded Faraday shield will help most devices survive an EMP. Musk said that the EMP Commission estimates that it will cost $2 billion to $4 billion to be able to protect the most important pieces of equipment in the national grid, but ideally, they want to see standards changed so that EMP protection can be integrated into the devices. There is a good reason to put effort into protecting against EMPs, particularly given the possibility that another Carrington-like event is not out of the question but these upgrades shouldn't divert attention from efforts to shore up defenses against more probable lines of attack, Musk said. There is no doubt that if Musk is working on it, it will be different from other prototypes of EMPs, and the reason for that is because we all know how brilliant Musk is. In the meantime, all we need to do is wait and trust in Musk's brilliance. He will certainly come up with something that is dependable, strong, and fantastic. To sum up, neither Musk nor we would want to go to war with each other. However, one should always have a plan and be prepared for any contingency that may occur. Don't you think so? Anyways, folks, that's it for today's video. If you're interested in watching more videos on Elon Musk, then what are you waiting for? Simply click the subscribe button and ring the bell icon because new videos are on the way. And we'll see you in the next one.